Hey everybody, this is Claire, and this is Small Joyful Things. As always, I go to thrift stores, or I go to estate sales, or sometimes I buy things from Craigslist. I look for things that either teach me something new, or tell me a story. And then I bring them home, try and figure out everything I can about them, and then I tell you guys about them. So, here's what I've got today. <laughs> so, I want you to just take a look at the the painting on the front of this. I bought this box in the thrift store for four dollars and I have to say that I, although the box itself is quite intricate, I bought it entirely for the fact that it's painted on the front and I love the scene of these two characters. I mean I can't quite decide exactly what's going on so I have decided for my own, you know, just for my own amusement that what's actually happening here is this guy is stealing her fruit and she's about to open a can of whoop ass on him before it. <laughs> I just, I really love it. I just love the, the expressions of the characters. It's just, it's just incredibly funny. <laughs> I like it. It's, it's, it, you know, it's so cute. So, so, okay. Well, what have we got here? We have a, a jewelry box with a lot of very intricate work on it. So I'm just going to measure it up real quick. It's so square. I love it. It is four and three quarter inches across, uh, about three and a quarter inches wide. And measure from the widest part, you can kind of guess here, about two and a quarter inches high. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I need a better measuring tape. Anyway, so truly box. It's lined on the inside, just to, you know, a very kind of soft, shunty material. Um, nothing to no closures or anything, but the hinges are quite are quite stiff. It holds clothes on its own, and it's been covered with felt at the bottom. It's kind of a bit yeah, it's got fuzz on it. Uh, there is a very slight amount of damage. You can see here the corner has been knocked off. Not very noticeable. It's it's still there, however. Now the design itself, if you want to take a look at it, isn't that astonishingly intricate? I I tried to to measure. These tiny little pieces, the very center of those little those little dots, they they're like less than a millimeter. They're teeny tiny, so tiny, so tiny. And the design work is all, and it's all there's so much of it as well. It's like all the way around. Every single piece here is all like inlaid by hand, as far as I can tell. And again, part of the reason that I actually picked it up, I like I, I picked it up initially because I saw that in the front and I thought, oh, that must be printed. And then realized it was painted and I thought, I have to have that. But the rest of it, I, after looking at it, going like, wow, that is incredibly intricate. Now, the interest, the other interesting thing about this is that whoever has made this, like kind of cocked it up on top. Because you can see here, like on the top here, that the the thin layer of dark wood is on the inside and the, the thicker layer is on the outside but on the sides it's reversed so basically somebody cut the side like when they're actually putting this on they put they put the pieces on upside down like either this piece needs to be turned around or this piece needs to be turned around because then the the matching layers will be on the inside and you can see there that it just as a result it doesn't line up at the corners which is a shame, as far as I can tell, that's the only thing wrong with this box. The rest of it is just, it's just kind of nice. So, okay, what have we actually got here before I, before I get into that? Let's put that there. Come on, I've had... What we have here is a, a Persian Katam box. Um, hopefully I'm actually maybe pronouncing that right. Katam. God damn. I'm maybe I, I'm not I'm not hugely yeah, I'm not good at pronunciation. So so basically what we have here is a is a this pattern, these these inlays, it's a type of marquetry that's uh, that's that's done in, in Iran. Um it's been it usually comes up if you actually see listings for this stuff, it usually comes up under Persian Katam boxes, the jewelry boxes. But there there is kind of other stuff that they, they can be as well. It's not just the boxes, but I just happen to be looking at this right now. Um the this particular pattern, that is what Katam really is. It's not the, the, the painting on top, it is it is basically this. Designing of in it's inlaid articles. Uh, okay, okay, let's 
It is a version of marquetry where art forms are made by decorating the surface of wooden articles with delicate pieces of wood, bone, metal, in precisely cut and intricate geometric patterns. Now, the way that they do it, and uh, if I, you know, if I'm going to, if you just want to read through, is that they take, uh, they basically put everything together like, uh, like, like doing the, like doing uh, marines in glass in 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 glass blowing. They like take thin little slices of all these and roll them up into tiny, you know, and, and squish them together, and then chop them into slices, you know, and then essentially build up the forms like that. Thin rods of different coloured woods, ivory, bone, brass, silver, etc., were glued together into long bunches that could have a round, rectangular, polygonal cross section. The bunches were cut into thin slices and combined with other intricate patterns. So, what we effectively have here is that you've got this hexagonal slice and this little triangular slice, and that probably would have been on two different, like two different, like sets of two different bunches of rods, and they literally just slice them and then line them up on the box and there you go there's your inlay and i'm assuming something similar for these up here as well but even so it's all incredibly like it must have been incredibly tricky work to do like i can't even imagine everything is so so tiny and to be honest i can't really identify this this stuff either i have to assume that the little bit in the middle must be uh, must be brass it kind of has that kind of color and and it's not tarnished obviously because it's lacquered over top and uh, the wood itself, obviously, is just, it's going to be different kinds of wood and I can't really identify wood on site, so I really don't know. The unfortunate thing as well is that there's no signature or anything. I was hoping that there would be. Part of the sticker from the shop was actually covering this part here and I was really hoping that there would be some thing that could try and translate, but no, there's nothing. So, okay, begs the question. How did this get to Vancouver, of all places, if it is originally from Iran? And the answer is that I really don't know. I did some research and kind of figure out some possibilities. But, I mean, the reality is, if you know about the history of Iran, there was the, the Islamic Revolution in 1979. And after that point, like, Americans kind of stopped going there. Like, for tourist reasons, anyway. The, like, the tourists who would go there now would be, you know, from, maybe from Europe. And there's not a lot of them. And especially because right now, I mean, the, the political situation there isn't great anyway. So I can't imagine a lot of people are going there and picking up souvenirs like this. This kind of suggests to me this is something vintage or it's something that's been brought back um, possibly by a businessman or by someone who is kind of getting out. Um, a friend of mine is, is Iranian and that was her family situation. She basically left the country in the 90s, came to Canada and decided to stay. You know, she, you know, well, I may have to just ask, ask her about this. You know, I'm kind of, I'm definitely want to ask, I'm definitely want to show it to her anyway, because knowing that it is Iranian, um, I, I generally kind of want to add, like if I know someone who actually is from the culture, I want to ask them about it and ask them their opinion of it. And I would, all, I would definitely be offering it to her first, like regardless of cost. I mean, again, I spent $4 on it. But that is really my best guess as to how it actually got here to Vancouver, of all places. Lots of stuff just kind of finds its way to Vancouver anyway. This is kind of yeah, coming up probably a very long way and probably through a very circuitous path just to get here. Um. Anyway, so let's just say that if she doesn't want it, like what's it actually, what's it actually worth? And this is an unfortunate case of how long is a piece of string? <laughs> the prices of these vary a lot. It seems to depend on like the quality of the the quality of the pattern, the quality of the marquetry. Some of them can go for up to a hundred dollars if they're very nice. A lot of them go for anywhere in between. There's a few here which is kind of similar to this one. That would see that sold there for twelve, you know, twelve seventy. Not not a whole amount, not a lot of money. So to be honest, I really don't know. <laughs> That'll get a, yeah, I'm probably going to be if she doesn't want it, I'll be putting it up on eBay and I'll you know set a starting bid of maybe five or six dollars. And then just, you know, let it run and see what happens to it. Because I'm sure someone's really going to like that image. It's just, a, it's such a fun image. I like it. I just like it a lot. What a jewellery box to own. <laughs> so, there we go. This is my small joyful thing for today. Uh, I still just, yeah. He's in trouble, absolutely. 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. Um, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.